I want to talk about the wildest, boldest, most surreal experiences I had in life. And trust me, I'm extremely neurotic. I may not look like it, but let me just start. Anyway, I met Leonardo DiCaprio. Let me explain how. My best friend was famous. He was on the TV show called One World. I was living with him as his roommate. And uh, he got me in the back of my acting. His name was Harvey Silver. So I just first start went to Los Angeles, right? And we were walking around North Hollywood in the bowling alley. Bowling alley. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then uh, Harvey was really good. Basketball, arcade games, dancing, rapping. But anyway, he's playing arcade games. And uh, I'm real friendly. So it was this tall white guy about six feet tall with blonde hair, I think it was. And he had these Buddy Holly dark black glasses on. So I just started talking to him for like 10 minutes. Man, I don't know, like grow over there or blah, 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 you know, whatever. And then Harvey came over like 10 minutes later after he like put his initials on top of the arcade game. And he looks at me and he smiled. So I look at him like, what are you smiling about? And he's like, do you know you're talking to Leonardo DiCaprio? So I looked at him. I was like, oh, shoot, I didn't recognize you. And he was, Leo was so cool. He liked that I didn't recognize him. So he was like, oh, yeah, that's cool, that's cool. So um, we talked for another 10 more minutes, me, Harvey, and Leonardo DiCaprio. And uh, it was really cool, a good conversation. And that's the most praise I gave Harvey. I told Leo about Harvey's acting credentials, and he knew the same people. So Harvey liked that. So, you know, I was, I was his boy. I was his best friend. So anyway, uh, and I, I respect Leo. He was gave me, he gave me nothing but respect. And um, But there was these young white girls that did recognize him. And they would go, oh, my God, oh, my God, Leo, Leo, Leo. I never saw anything like that. And they started freaking out. Oh! And his whole expression has changed. He looked at me, shook my hand, shook Harvey's hand, walked off. All right, another uh, wild experience. When I was young, homeless, like uh, 19, 18, 19 mostly, I uh, hopped a freight train. I mean, I don't know. I was walking around with some young knuckleheads and we could hop on the freight train. And I know there's one person, rather. And we was down south, which is deadly. And uh, it was so surreal. I remember I fell asleep and I woke up and it looked like it was in South America. The plants it was so large, the trees. You saw animals running by. That was all right. Three, uh, my ex girlfriend was rushing. We went to Atlantic City one time. She swam out too far and the undercurrents took me. I almost died. And I kept saying mantra, I'm not going to die, I'm not going to die. And, and it was kind of racist because the safeguard, she was like treading water. He went out and took the boat to save her. I saw half the Atlantic Ocean, look like a dolphin. And then he finally came and got me <laughs> through a boy and I grabbed it. And I was like, <gasps> yeah, that was, just, that was just, but I don't want to say it was racist. But it's just like, come on, man. I look worse off. Anyway, Liza Mayfield. I was in Job Corps. I live a wild life, like I said. And uh, so we had sex, sex, sex. I can't remember if I used a condom or not. But anyway, we broke up after argument after a month. And uh, she later got pregnant like a month or two later. And then um, I didn't even think it was mine. I thought it was the other guy. She dated this guy named Frito after me. He was real good. And uh, Pop and Lock was popular at that time. And, um, and she was Puerto Rican. He was Puerto Rican. So I'm like, all right, whatever. And then some girl in uh, one of my classes was like, how you know it's not your kid? So I went to Liza. And I was like, Liza, is that my kid? And she's like, no, leave me alone. We broke up. I'm like, it ain't about that. Is that my kid? And she said, I, I'm kind of hyper. That's a shows in my videos. And so that's not always good. Sometimes it's good in Hollywood, but not in real life. And uh, you got to just be careful because you know, everybody's feeling your energy. <laughs> and there's a lot of dark energy in the world. But anyway, I don't want to uh, ramble. So anyway, um, so we arguing in the hallway. And she said, listen, I had to miscarry. Uh, and then she got, she wasn't tough or nothing, but she got in a fight like a week later and got kicked out of job court. So I don't know. I really. Anyway, uh, I live a wild life. So anyway, I took the Greyhound bus from Los Angeles, from Philadelphia to Los Angeles, I swear on my life, about 10 times. Um, I could have peace, so why didn't you take a plane? I just, I don't know, I just find going back to California um, on holidays, I was trying to be a background actor. Anyway, so one time I was going back, and this girl, you know, I always had jungle fever, so it was this white chick, and she ain't paying no mind, and then I, uh, during time on the bus, I eventually sat next to her, and then she told me she just got out of prison. Her boyfriend was in the drugs. Somehow she had nothing to do with it, but she still went to a woman's prison. She told me what it was like being there and all that. And she had sex like uh, like two years or something. And so one thing led to another. So I spent $100 to go to a hotel, and we had sex. And uh, I thought it was kind of wild. Another, another white girl, um, Russian girlfriend, went to a King Tut exhibit at Ben Franklin Institute. And that was weird because you'd be proud that you're Egyptian and... And uh, I should look at the hieroglyphics and it looked like me and Harvey. And, you know, I was like, I sat in front of, I imagine I'm sitting with a white girlfriend looking at hieroglyphics with brown people and say, that looks like me and a whole bunch of white people in the room. <laughs> so I do be saying stuff off beat. And then uh, I was a back my actor. I thought I was a cop on the show called Barry Park. It didn't stay on that long. And I, it, wanted, it made me so mad. One of the producers, a uh, white guy, saw a little black kid and a, and a white girl playing, you know, talking. 
and he, I saw I was looking at the whole time, and he told the little black kid, "Why don't you go over there and play?" And uh, I looked at him, and he looked at me, and he was like, "I was ready to go off, but I didn't want to get kicked off the set and mess up my back my acting, you know, uh, whatever could happen, uh, job possibilities." Uh, oh yeah, so taxi driver, and I, you know, you meet all kinds of people here, taxi driver, all walks of life. And I took one person one time. And uh, I said, oh, God, look at this person. He looked like an uh, American, really, like, racist. This is going to be, like, a non-fun trip. And he's probably looking at me like, oh, look at this non-speaking immigrant. My taxes pay his illegitimate kids and smells like curry. And by the time I took him to his destination, we was high-fiving. And he was like, yo, still, you going to bring Natasha to the neighborhood? And we have a barbecue. I said, um, do you got any ropes or hockey masks? He said, no, 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 the next block, next block. I was like, oh, he gave me, like, a $40 tip. And he was like, yo. You can't judge. Pre prejudice means you prejudge. So it taught me a lesson, man. Uh, hopefully, you can teach other people that are making videos. Uh, what else up? Boom, I wrote down. Uh, oh, yeah, and there's another EMT name. He was uh, white, too. And we got along great. Uh, we had a little falling out with some dumb stuff. But uh, we used to go like uh, up in the burbs somewhere. We go to Wild Wild Lot. And he goes, Stu, uh, they got barbecue chips over here. I said, No, 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 I'm going to get some Twinkies. And he said, um, I, I think you can use food stamps. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not going to use food. I could da, 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 da. And I said, so we just go back and forth. And uh, it kind of made me think, like, historically, I'm going off the comedy thing. Uh, well, I'm not making comedy album now. He was like, uh, food stamps, there's more white people on <laughs> food stamps. And, you know, we always get stereotyped. There's more white people. There's more, they say there's more black men in jail than college. Yeah, from age 1824, but not 1865. And they talk about the projects all the time. The projects were started for white people after World War II, so low income housing. They didn't start with black people. And ghetto is a term misused too, because that started from the 15th century with Jewish people. When Hitler rounded up people to kill them, they were in ghettos. So I don't know. I thought it was interesting to bring up. Uh, one time, with me and Harvey's best friend, and foster care George, became friends. So he went to visit Harvey in New York when he was just starting out in acting. Um, he left foster care. He got he was in a car accident when he was six. And he got hit by a car. He got the money finally in 18, went to New York. And then uh, we went all the way up there. And then we didn't have enough money to come back. <laughs> so I panned. I panned when I was in Covenant, Covenant House. And I'm real good. I'm personable. I got good looks. And, uh, you know, I, it was, Harvey was really impressed. Cause I was going up to people. I didn't give him the same old story. Like, can you give me? I would give a story. Like, yeah, man. Yeah, da, 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 da. And they would give me like 4 or $5. And uh, it was just surreal. And then I was a Boy Scout. Uh, I lived in the suburbs. I was the only black kid in the whole school. Uh, Armour Avenue um, and, uh, is in Lance down there in Philadelphia and uh, it was just weird because I was in the Boy Scouts I remember a little white kid saw me in the sleeping bag and he said look at that nigger in the sleeping bag and uh, it was just I, I bring this up because this is my life it's my stories and then uh, I was on Buffy the 